Hello, uh, I'm about to do another demonstration painting. This time um, I'm going to be using a 60 centimetre board, uh, which is the size that I use with my students when I do workshops. This is what that looks like at the back. It's a, it's a 60 centimetre, nine millimetre um, MDF board that um, Bunnings cuts them into squares and my husband then makes them into a round for me and I use those uh, to teach my students how to do resin paintings. Today when I do it I'm going to go over an old painting that I don't like. This is it. So I'm going to resin over that. That's what you do you resin over paintings that you don't like. You can go over them as many times as you like. Of course, they get heavier. Every every layer gets heavier, but if they get too heavy, you should just make them into um, coffee or patio tables. So today, I'm using Barnes Epoxy Glass Resin. That's part B, which is the hardener. And this is part A, which is the resin. And you mix the two together and um, use these cups, uh, 60, 600 mils of resin. You can do it with less. Uh, I always do it a, with a bit more, just to allow me more resin. And also I use the leftovers to make um, different little things like like these things. I'll make coasters with the leftover resin. That's another one. I've got heaps of those. I make petri dishes like that. I make these sorts of um, rounds and I make this shape petri dish as well. They're not food safe. Uh, you can't actually put food on them. No resin is food safe. So um, there you go. I am about to um, start making the new painting and uh, wish me luck and I will post, uh, I will make the uh, demonstration into a YouTube so that I can share. Okay, um, first of all, um, I've already done this once or twice, but I'm just going to clean the surface of this uh, board uh, to get any greasy finger marks office and I used isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. I'll just show you underneath too. I always take the boards underneath like that and that um, makes the, the drips, the overflow drips um, easy to get off. So first of all Got the bars, um, this is part A. I'll mix, um, I'll put 300 mils in the cup, into the jug. It's quite thick. It's a lovely shiny version, this one. I buy most of my resin supplies online. Uh, I would like to use artist quality materials. And this is part B, which is the hardener. It's a little bit over 300 and that's all right. I'll just put this one a little bit over as well. So you can see part B 
is a lot uh, not a lot thinner. So now I mix this for two minutes. You have to mix really thoroughly. So you go round and round, not too vigorously. Both directions, then go backwards and forwards like that. And then scrape the side and put it back in and keep doing it. And I've got to do that for two minutes. And you have to really make sure you um, mix resin properly. If you don't mix the resin and harden it properly, you will end up with sticky spots on your painting, and which will never cure. And uh, you don't want that to happen. So, as I said, two minutes of mixing. Uh, I've eliminated one of the colours that I showed you before too. I eliminated the aqua one. I decided that six colours is enough. So I had two greens that I was going, you know, one was aqua and the other one was the uh, tropical bird. So I'll just use the tropical bird and just eliminate the aqua. Getting close to two minutes now. Scraping the sides. Okay, that's two minutes. And I'll divide the mixture up. a bit um, in the bottom here so I can uh, put over the um, spread it a clear so that um, the mixture flows over easily. So first of all I'm going to mix the white. This is the solid solutions white. Um, I give it a, a stir, it's a paste. So I give it a stir with my popsicle stick and what's on the end of my stick is enough. The colours are very uh, concentrated so you, just, you don't need a lot. Just make sure you mix them thoroughly. This is the tropical bird, lovely colour. Again, what's on the end of the stick is enough. Put the lid on, make sure you always put the lid on properly. Stir this up.
Uh, next I'm going to use the violet. Give it a stir. And what's on the end of my stick will be enough. Put the lid on. And move them away from the uh, from where the overflow resin is going to uh, to drip. Some of my students forget that <laughs> they're so busy trying to learn something new they forget that. So I have to keep an eye out to make sure they don't put them underneath where they will be dripped on with resin. This one is the stormy night. Give that a stir. And what's on the end of my stick is enough. There again, put the lid on. Stir it up. This one is the Lorez and it's called um, Blue Lagoon. Sorry about that. Stir it up and that's enough. getting a bit um, hard that colour. I think um, the, the colours do have a shelf life and I had that one from before I had cancer so it's probably a year or two old. I had to stop uh, doing resin for about a year when I was being treated for cancer but I'm all well again now. And before I do my last one, the gold, I forgot to fill these little things, these little moulds that I've got. And they make these little things, which I will probably use them in my um, pyramids. So before I, I used all the resin up, just put a little bit in these moulds. I've already put um, a mould release in here. It's a, a urethane mould release made by Barnes called Stoner. Funny name, isn't it? But it works really well so that when you, uh, when these are cured tomorrow morning, the, the, the little jewels that it makes pop out really easily. There you go. That didn't take much. I'll put these aside and I will give them a blast if they keep going shortly. But next I will mix my gold. that much on the end of the stick. The gold is it's one of the metallic colours. It's really important not to breathe or any of the colours in really but um, particularly the metallic colours because they they can be highly toxic if you breathe in the powder. So there's my gold, lovely colour. So next I'm going to put my resin 
around the edges. Use that stick to scrape out as much as possible. These little containers that I mix the resin in, I buy those from online from Art Tree Creations. They're only a few dollars each. And they're really good for measuring and mixing your resin. You can use just any plastic throws from the supermarket or, you know, but I like these. Okay. So I'm just going to rub that around, make sure it goes over the edges. The edges are more important than when I'm doing this than the middle. This is a step that you don't have to take, you can just pour straight away, but I always do this first uh, because it just makes the resin flow much better. And as you can see, I've got two pair of gloves on, so this will make the top glove dirty or sticky. So I will take it off and throw it away. There you go, that's pretty well covered that. Take the top glove off. Now, um, I'll start with the dark. I usually start with dark. There's no hard and fast rule. You don't have to start with dark, but I mostly do. And I'm just going to pour it on randomly. I don't really have um, the design in mind. Sometimes I do. Not always. Sometimes I just put the resin on whichever way it takes my fancy at the time. I'll do the, uh, the purple next, the violet. And I pour it on and overlap some of the other colours there. quite dark too but it, when you, you'll see um, it's quite different to the other one and this blue is a lovely blue mm. they all look very dark don't they but I'm sure when the other colours go on and I start moving them around with the heat gun, um, you'll see the difference in the colours. I need to do the white next. Usually I do white second last, but I don't want the white to be dominant. favourite colour, the tropical bird. but not least, the lovely gold. The 
next I'll use my heat gun. I might give that a bit of a tilt first, just to tilt some of the colours over the side. Then I'll use my heat gun and I will use it first to um, warm the resin up and then I'll use the heat gun a bit like a paintbrush and it moves the colours, it merges them into each other and um, helps to create lacing. So um, this will be fairly loud so you might need to uh, turn the sound down for this part. I'm making sure uh, the resin goes over the edges. So next I will use my heat gun and um, pop the bubbles and just create a little bit more lacing. Tilt it on the side and just push it along. You see all that lovely lacing happening.
notice that I um, I don't leave the heat in one spot for too long because you can burn resin and uh, you really don't want to burn it. You'd have to put another layer over. Look at the beautiful lacing in that. Soon I will uh, zoom in so you can see. I'll just do it a little bit more. One of the enemies of um, resin is little bits of dust or hair that float around and I can see a couple of bits in there so I'll just get them out with this, uh, with this stick. So I saw one here. Yeah. I think that looks really pretty. What do you think? Okay, I will zoom in so you can see it. But I will also take that glove. I will um, post the result. hope you enjoy that demonstration and um, I'm pretty pleased with it. I love all the lacing. Looks great. Thank you for watching.